Good morning, everybody. Today we'll be playing some Zendikar Rising Draft. Now, Mall of the Skyclave seems like a pretty good first pick. I don't think it's actually worth anything, though. Not that that matters, but I'm just curious. Yeah, it's not worth anything, but it is a fantastic limited card, and it is our rare, so we're going to take it. All right, pack two. Probably should take Journey to Oblivion. It's fairly good removal. It's uncommon. It's also white. We're cutting white if we take it. Yeah, I'll take a Journey to Oblivion. White's one of the colors that has access, relatively easy access to the party mechanic when paired with, like, blue or green, I think. It's been a little bit since we played Zendikar Rising. Um, because we've been playing Proliferate Cube. One thing, though, I'm probably going to stop doing limited content for a little bit. Uh, I meant to start off this con I meant to start off this draft with this conversation, but um, Ameria Captain is pretty fantastic. Excellent uh, party payoff, so we're gonna take it. Fearless Fledgling is also powerful enough to play by itself. Yeah, um, but I'm probably gonna stop doing limited for a little bit, at least until like a better limited format comes out. Um, which Proliferate Cube is going away today, which is why I'm not playing it, because I can't get the games done in time um, before it goes away. But um, unless they unless they come out with another limited format that's a lot of fun to play and more interesting for people to watch, I think I'm going to take a little break from limited. I'll just fill the, uh, fill the gap with some more constructed content. I've been doing, like, one competitive video, which is usually Tron, one limited video, and one non-competitive modern constructed video um, every cycle of three days for a while now. And it's pretty clear to me, uh, Skyclave Cleric is definitely definitely the pick here. It's really good. Ghastly Gloom Hunter is also worth consideration, but um, it's extremely clear to me that, like, other than if we get like an extremely zany uh, limited video of some kind, which is not something that you can have every time you do a limited video, uh, generally those videos pull in like one fifth or one sixth of the views that the rest of my constructed videos do and because we're trying to grow the channel right now it's like i'll play it if i feel like it if i want to but sometimes i feel like i'm forcing myself to play limited because i've committed to playing limited but it's also like it's not that popular on my channel for probably a lot of reasons i'm not the best limited player in the world and i can't do zany stuff like i enjoy doing all the time so um yeah i've rambled enough tldr if they don't come out with a better limited format that's more fun to play than Zendikar Rising Limited, uh, not that Proliferate Cube is bad, but unless they come out with something that people want to watch a little bit more, I think I'm going to take a break for a little bit and do do mostly constructed content. So we've been getting really good white cards. Um, Territorial Scythe, Scythe Cat is good um, if we want to do Green White Landfall. Rotag Bugcatcher is also good if we wanted to do, like, Red White Warriors, because we do have the Maul. Farsight Adept, though, lets us stay open. Look at the white cards coming around. I'll take a McKinney Ox. Dauntless Unity is not bad, especially if we end up going wide. So white is very open right now, which is fantastic. I don't think I would play two Oxes, so we'll take the Angel Heart Protector. All right, yeah, I think Snarecaster is the pick, in case we do end up going green-white which I'm still not sure we would. This is nice because if we get a monocolor rare that's playable in our second pack, we can actually just like use that to make our archetype, whatever it is. Uh, Reclaim the Waste is not bad. Strength of Solidarity, also good. And Forest. So we're probably green-white, just judging by the fact that those green cards are going that late. But let's see what pack two holds for us. Confounding Conundrum is not really... Uh, not really good. Limited. So let's see. Looking at our sideboard, it's all green. Spring Mantle Cleric is good. It's really good if you're playing three colors. Taunting Arbor Mage, Territorial Scythe Cat. I could take Skyclave Sentinel if I wanted to stay open for one more pick. Juari Disruption's not bad. I'm gonna go with the Scythe Cat, I think. Mel Priest of Oblivion, Menace, Lifelink, Vampire Cleric. Enters the battlefield. If it was kicked, reanimate a creature. That's excellent. Um, yeah, I'm going to take the Null Priest. We might be doing Black-White. 
Squad Commander. Enters the battlefield, make a 1-1 white core warrior for each creature in your party. Yeah, that's playable. It's like a white rare. Canyon your boa will reward us for going wide. There's also uh, Canopy Bayloth, which is a great card. But we'll take the mouse. So we are either uh, green-white or black-white. Black-white plays a little bit better into the party mechanic because black-white black clerics. Um... But, like, we don't even have to go that deep. If we can get our party number to, like, two or three, even off of the back of the uh, Stonework Pack Beasts, like, Emeria Captain, Squad Commander, and I'm pretty sure we have one other party mechanic that was really... Oh, Journey to Oblivion. Like, off of those three cards, it's pretty strong. Green has some decent um, distribution of... Oh, gosh. Okay, well, this is actually a really tough pick for me. So Crag Plate Bayloth is really strong, but it's also incredibly expensive, and we have no ramp. Um, Malakir Blood Priest is not bad if we want to go black. Strength of Solidarity is a really good card if we're playing the party mechanic, and we already have one. Because it makes like any individual creature we play really, really good. And there's also a Shepherd of Heroes, which is just a good party payoff, basically. If I want to go black, I think it's Malakir Blood Priest. I'm going to go with Shepherd of Heroes, though. So our options here are Drana, Silencer, or Broken Wings. We could also take the Blight Blade or the Arbor Mage, but I'm going to take the Silencer. I'm kind of hovering between, between two colors here. Okay, Veteran Adventurer is really good. So I will take Veteran Adventurer. Uh, Kabira Outrider, Might of Marasa, or Smite the Monstrous. I think I take the Outrider. Spring Mantle Cleric. This is a minimum of 5 mana, 4, 5. That's playable. Kind of like scale the heights. We already have a snare caster. Uh, Marasa Brute is technically a warrior. I'm gonna put that in the side for now. We're kind of heavy in the three drop slot, and we have other other cards that help fit the uh, party mechanic. Uh, Disenchant's good sideboard. Yeah, strength of solidarity is I think the way we're going with this. Green is just a lot more open than black is. We did try for it though. So Roiling Vortex, Core Blade Master, Dauntless Survivor, Expedition Healer. I think Dauntless Survivor is a little bit better. Kind of depends on how many warriors and stuff we have. Uh, warriors or clerics. We have a decent number of clerics, which I think means we want the Expedition Healer over the Survivor. They're both commons. Core Blade Master, we have one piece of equipment. We're not we're not playing a two mana one one. The only way that I, I don't think uh, Roiling Vortex is worth anything. I might rare draft, but it's worth a ticket. It's not worth it for me. All right, we'll take Expedition Healer. Grackma, Skyclave Ravager, or Kabira Takedown. Uh, I would consider taking Grackma here um, because we do have the Lay of the Land effect with Kicker that I can't remember the name of right now. I think Reclaim the Waste is what it's called. Kabira Takedown, though, makes our deck a lot better. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to take Kabira Takedown. So there's another Strength of Solidarity, which, honestly, I'm I'm pretty chill to just take this. Broken Wings is nice. Um, and Seagate Banneret is fine as well, but we'll take Strength of Solidarity. Another Emeria Captain... What else do we have? Versus like an Iridescent Horn Beetle. Make a 1-1 one, one green insect creature token for each 1-1 one, one counter you put on creatures you control this turn. Yeah, I'm going to take the Ameria Captain. Just having like giant flying vigilance guys is really good. Tended Healer. Whenever you gain life for the first time each turn, make a 1-1 one, one white cat creature token and you can give creatures lifelink. Oof. Uh, Core Celebrant is really strong. It's one of the best cards in white in limited in this format. Um... I've not gotten to play with Attended Healer yet, and I think it's actually a little bit worse in this deck, but it's a very strong card, so I'm going to try it. Prowling Felidar is just a landfall creature. <laughs> um, I don't think we need anything out of this pack. I'll take the Prowling Felidar, but... Okay, Vastwood Fortification is good. Cliffhaven Sellsword can help us drop our curve just a little bit. One thing's for sure is green and white are very open. So we can either take 
Farsight Adept, Core Blade Master, Roiling Vortex. I guess Dauntless Survivor. Dauntless Survivor seems a little bit better than the rest of them, so we'll take Dauntless. Um, you know what? I'll take a Foil Mountain, because I don't have one yet. Seagate Banneret is a fine card. Reclaim the Wastes I'm not probably going to need. We'll take the other one drop. Your Outrider, Cell Sword. Wow. 37 playable picks. I mean, really, that number is closer to, like, 39. That's really impressive. All right, let's take a look here. Don't think I need Resolute Strike. Probably only going to play one Seagate Banneret. Um, Kabira Takedown, Vastwood Fortification. going to put in their own piles, along with Skyclave Cleric. I'm going to play some number of these as land, so we're going to look through the rest of our cards first. Uh, Mirasa Brute, Snarecaster. While they do contribute to the party mechanic, um, I don't think we need them in particular. Vera Outrider is technically a party payoff. We're really heavy in the 4-drop slot, so I'm going to drop Prowling Felidar, because I can't afford to be playing creatures that only get good later at 4 mana when we're curving out this hard. The scale the Heights is a little ambitious. It's not bad. Um, I just feel like we're probably not going to be running enough lands to take care of the Explore effect. I mean, gaining life, putting a 1-1 counter, and drawing a card is all great. But I'm going to cut one Outrider. Since we're only two colors, I think we can cut Spring Mantle Cleric. I need to cut two more cards. Scythe Cat is pretty good. It just doesn't um, doesn't contribute to party. It does have Trample though, and we do have a pretty good equipment. I don't want to cut any of our fours. I think they're way too strong. We could cut the Ox, but the Ox can help us get in the final points of damage. All right, I'm going to try going without the Ox here. I need to cut one other card. So I have a feeling that Strength of Solidarity is very frequently going to be one green mana, put two 1-1 one -one counters on target creature. So you have a decent number of warriors, at least one rogue, several clerics, and one, like, one wizard, and one, like, rainbow party member who can fill any role. So... You know what? I'm actually going to cut the Banneret. I know we're aggro, and I know Banneret's really good, but I've got a feeling that we may not actually need it. I'm keeping Blightblade because it's a rogue. I'm going to play six green sources and ten white sources. We're going to try playing it like this. All right. We have ourselves a green-white party deck. All right, round one, here we go. I would love to play first. It's kind of a slow hand, but we got both our colors. We can play basically anything we draw, so. All right, start planes, pass the turn. Let me draw a Strength of Solidarity, play planes. Strength of Solidarity, not a bad draw, but I would prefer a creature I can play next turn. Okay, I'm going to play as an Expedition Healer. Draw another Strength of Solidarity. Am I really above binding a 2-2? You know what? No. If we delay long enough, uh, we can just make gigantic flying Vigilance dudes. On a tormenting voice, discarding inordinate rage. All right, we need a land. I should have specified an untapped land, but uh, play Vastwood Thicket. Pass the turn. <laughs> All right, Puna plays a Warrior Lord. That's fine. We draw an Angel Heart Protector. Okay. I'm going to play the Angel Heart Protector this turn because our Ameria Captain next turn can enter as a 3-3 instead of a 2-2. And if we draw an untapped land, we can make it even bigger than that. Four mana for our opponent, playing a Prowling Felidar. Landfall trigger gets a 1-1. One, one. Opponent passes. We draw another Strength of Solidarity. Play Ameria Captain. Okay, 
Mary Captain gets two 1 1 counters, and we pass the turn. Okay, opponent puts a 1 1 counter on Prowling Felidar from the Landfall trigger. They attack and attack. We're going to take 7. Go to 13. 6 mana. Oh man. Opponent has Morag. It's a 7 7. We draw Canyon your Boa. So. Strength of Solidarity. We can either make marry a captain a 7-7, seven, seven, which should help when our opponent attacks multiple times, or we can play out the mouse and just have a chump blocker. I think we play out the mouse. Go to combat. Attack our opponent for 5 in the air. Opponent takes 5, goes to 15. They untap. Opponent plays a Kabira Outrider. I think pumping the War Leader is probably the best bet for them. Though I'm not 100% on that one. Okay, they pump the Felidar, sure. Okay, opponent goes to combat. Attacks, attacks. So, block, block. Opponent plays a Fisher Wizard. If they get a landfall trigger and an additional combat step, we're basically dead. Discarding a practice tactics. Okay, we untap. Draw Maul of the Skyclaves. Sure. Give our guy flying and first strike. Make it an 8 8. Go to combat. Attack for 8. Opponent goes to seven. They gotta kill us this turn, and I don't think it's gonna be that hard. Yep, that's game. So I think we just need to keep a slightly faster hand. Yeah, I don't really have any sideboard I want to bring in, so we're just going to run it back. All right, I'll play first. All right. If we draw another card or draw another land, this is a really good curve. And if we draw two lands in a row, it's a great curve. Okay. Start planes, pass the turn. Okay, and play a forest, play Cliffhaven Cell Sword. Really hoping to draw another land. Okay, that is not another land. Go to combat. Attack for three. But it goes to 17. Yeah, we probably should be playing one more untapped land in the deck. Go to combat. Attack for three. See if our opponent trades. They do not. Go to 14. Play Fearless Fledgling. Pass the turn. They play a war leader. Attack us for five, no blocks. They play a mountain. We untap, we draw a strength of solidarity. Okay, when it goes to 11. Pass the turn. If we draw a land, we might be able to continue playing. Okay. It plays a Kabira Outrider. And attacks for nine. So chump the five damage here. Play Dauntless Survivor. 1-1 one, one counter on the Cell Sword. Uh, we don't hold back to block, do we? I think we attack. Alright. Jump the 5 damage so we don't die. And 
I have an ordinate rage, which takes us to one. They play a core celebrant, gaining one life. Third land, way too late. Alright, we're going to edit this deck. I'm going to bring in an additional forest, and I'm going to go ahead and drop probably this Kabira Outrider. Okay, see you guys in round two. Okay, round two. Uh, I'm not going to keep an only green land hand. Okay, I'm going to keep this. I think I put back a veteran. No, I put back a land. Okay, opponent starts Forest. We draw Journey to Oblivion, play Taijuru Blightblade. Pass the turn. Opponent plays a Dauntless Survivor, putting a 1-1 one -one counter on itself. Draw Strength of Solidarity, play an Expedition Healer. No attacks, pass the turn. Opponent plays a Swamp. Attacks for 2, no blocks. They play a Territorial Scythe Cat. We draw Farsight Adept, so we're going to put two counters on the Vigilance creature. An attack for four. Farsight Adept will be a good, uh, good play if we can play it. Okay. Opponent kicks a Reclaim the Wastes. Gets a Swamp and a Forest. No attacks. Draw planes, play planes, play Farsight Adept. Okay, uh, no attacks. We have three creatures in our party, which is quite nice. This would let us play Veteran Adventurer for three mana, then have four creatures in our party, and we can play Journey to Oblivion or Strength of Solidarity, depending on what we want to play. But it has a second Dauntless Survivor. Pumps the Scythe Cat. Kills the Blight Blade. Alright, that does make this turn a little bit worse. Play a Forest. Play Veteran Adventurer. Expedition Healer does have lifelink. I'm going to attack with it because they would have to trade their best creature to kill it. And we gain life in the process. Okay, they just chump. If we draw a white mana, we can play Journey to Oblivion and Nahiri's Binding in the same turn, which is pretty brutal. Making us discard two cards. I'm, I'm going to keep Journey to Oblivion. Okay, opponent passes. Draw planes. Play planes. Play Journey. Take out the Scythe Cat. And... Alright, opponent gives up. Well, that was a much better showing for this deck. I think I'm going to keep it uh, set up this way. Um, I think we have better sixes. The hand really wasn't that bad, but... Okay, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to put back Journey to Oblivion. Opponent starts Forest. Uh, we'll start Planes, pass the turn. So we have enough mana we can cast Attended Healer now. Opponent plays a second Forest into a Dauntless Survivor, pumping itself. Draw Farsight Adept, play a Forest, pass the turn. Second Dauntless Survivor. They make a 3-3 so they can get any extra damage this turn, that's fine. I don't want to play Farsight Adept because my opponent missed a land drop, but I don't really have a choice here, so we're going to play Farsight Adept. Draw a card. Strength of Solidarity is quite good. Okay, opponent plays a Swamp. I think Rabid Bite would be their best card they could have here. Acquisitions Expert's not bad. So you can have a Planes or you can have a Strength of Solidarity. They take Strength of Solidarity. They play their own. Attack for five. That's fine. We draw a Fearless Fledgling. 
And we're going to play an attended healer here. Pass the turn. Um, yeah, we'll attack for three. I'm going to play a forest into a gnarled colony. Attacks for five, no blocks. Go down to seven. They drain us down to four. Draw forest. Better an adventurer costs four. Yep, I think we have to play Veteran Adventurer this turn. Actually, does that matter? Hang on. Yeah, Veteran Adventurer this turn. Play a Forest. Play Veteran Adventurer. Pass the turn. They're attacking with everybody. Can we survive while blocking in such a way that Attended Healer and Veteran Adventurer stay alive? So if I block here, I'll take two over the top, and if we block the two next biggest things... We take four because it has trample and we lose. So if I double block here and I block here, we still take four and we lose. Which means I have to block like this. Got to block here. Got to block here. All right, that sucks a lot because we were hoping to use lifelink. But I'm glad I played this way because I don't think there was another way we could survive. If my opponent has a combat trick, we just lose. Yep. That's a loss. Alright. Run it back. Alright. Play first. One, two, three, four. Perfect. Keep. Start Blight Blade. Pass the turn. I'm going to start Swamp. Go to combat. Attack for one. Play Cell Sword. Pass. I'm going to play a Forest. An Acquisitions Expert. So you can have either another Cell Sword. Oh, you can just have a Cell Sword. We need everything else in this hand. Draw Dauntless Unity. Play Angel Heart Protector, give Cell Sword, Indestructible, go to combat, attack for four. Okay, they trade with the Death Touch, that's fine. So we'd like to draw any untapped land so we can get down Attended Healer. Want to play a Dauntless Survivor, sure. And Reclaim the Wastes. Okay, they get a Swamp, we untap. Draw a veteran adventurer. Okay. Go to combat. Attack with Angel Heart Protector. Okay, we are going to use Dauntless Unity to clear the way. I probably should have attacked with both there, because odds are they would block the one with higher toughness. If they block the other one, though, it turns out so bad for us. They play Scythe Cat, they play the swamp that they drew off of Reclaim the Waste, and they play a Utility Knife. Draw a Forest, play a Forest. Yeah, we play out Veteran Adventure, and then we attack with both creatures. Okay. No blocks. I'm going to play a second Scythe Cat. And land, triggering landfall on both. Into a Malakir Blood Priest, draining us for one. We untap. Draw planes. Play a planes. Play attended healer. Pass the turn. No attacks. If we draw a land, we can give two creatures lifelink. <sighs> kind of want to draw a removal for that scythe cat. We need Nahiri's Binding or our Journey to Oblivion. Okay, we draw planes. Play a planes. Go to combat. Yeah, I think we just attack with everybody. Opponent has some decent blocks. Not blocking the veteran adventurer. I think they are just going to get a scythe cat bigger than the other one, I guess. Okay, we'll gain eight. Opponent takes eight and goes to three. We get a cat. Pass the turn. Opponent plays a land, counters on the cats. 
Last card in hand is a kicked Skyclave Sentinel. Okay. Well, we draw a Vastwood Fortification. So, pass the turn. Okay, opponent plays a land. Landfall again. I basically can't attack right now, though. They move over Utility Knife. No attacks. Yep. So if we draw a removal there, dead in the water. Draw Shepherd of Heroes. Play Shepherd. Gain life. Up to 33. Pass the turn. Now if we draw a removal spell, I think we win. If we draw... Um, Strength of Solidarity, too, that's also, I think, enough to win. Okay, we untap. Draw planes. Play a planes. Pass the turn. We have about six cards in our deck that we could draw that would win on the spot, so about a one in four chance we win the game every turn. Okay, I'm going to play as a Nighthawk Scavenger, so winning becomes harder. Move over Utility Knife. We untap, we draw Maul of the Skyclaves. That helps a lot. Suit up Veteran Adventurer. Go to combat. Attack for seven in the air. Okay. Opponent chumps. Pass the turn. And opponent scoops the match. All right. I'm going to take a break and let the dog out, and then I'll finish this league. All righty. Round three. Here we go. Dog's been walked. Responsibilities tended to. Now we can finish off this league. Oof. I mean, we have two tap lands, but... Yeah, I think I'm going to go to six. I'd like some untapped mana. This is a bit more reasonable. I'm going to put back... I'm going to put back the mouse. This isn't fantastic, because we do need to have a curve, but we're also on the draw, so hopefully we draw something. Okay, opponent starts mountain. Passes. We draw Farsight Adept. Play a Forest. Play a Blight Blade. Pass the turn. Opponent plays a Plains into a Grotag Bug Catcher. We'll play a Plains. Go to combat. And attack for one. Okay. Opponent hits us for two. We go down to 18. We untap, we draw an Ameria Captain. Ameria Captain going to be quite good this game, I feel. We get in for one with Death Touch. Get our opponent to 18. Okay, second main, play planes, and Farsight Adept. Both of us draw. Okay, we draw a Forest, which is good. I'm tempted to play Attended Healer first, just so we could go Maximum Greed on this Ameria Captain, but I feel like we just need to get this onto the board. It's already going to enter as a 4-4, which is pretty good for 4 mana. I kind of forget that it doesn't... I, I forget that it counts itself. So, like, if you can set up the right creature type scenario, it's actually really good. Okay, opponent plays a Kabira Outrider. Makes Grotag Bugcatcher a 3-3. I'm not giving up the 1-1 one, one pump on this Ameria Captain just yet, though. Especially when we're going to follow this up with uh, a fourth party member into Strength of Solidarity. That seems really good. Squad Commander is also great. So, play a Mary, a Captain. Pump the team, or pump himself, sorry, not the team. Go to combat. Attack for four. At this point, it's not that big of a deal if we lose one of our creatures. Okay. They kill the wizard. <laughs> Opponent has Journey to Oblivion. That sucks. They get in for two. Okay. Take two, go to 13. We untap. Draw planes. I guess Squad Commander is slightly better. So 
so make some core warriors. Go to combat. Get in for one. When it takes one, goes to 16. Looks like I need to restart the client. Because I can't tell anything that's going on right now. Okay, opponent attacks for three. Yeah, we're just going to chump with the two core warriors. We'll take one over the top. Untap. Draw planes. Okay, one sec. Apparently Moto needs to update, so hopefully I make it back in time. Alright, and we're back. Play a forest. Play an attended healer. Question is, do we go tall or do we go wide? With the strength of solidarity, we can either pump the Blight Blade, or we could pump the Squad Commander. I think I'm going to put it on the Blight Blade. can close out of this chat window. Alright. Attack for 7. Okay, opponent takes 7, goes to 9. Okay, opponent plays an Ameria Captain as a 3-3. Three, three. And passes, we untap. Draw our own Journey to Oblivion. Target non-land permanent opponent controls. Well, we take their Ameria Captain. There's no way we don't. I would say taking their Journey would be sweet. Because we could get back our Ameria Captain as another huge creature, but... Alright. Attack for lethal. Opponent probably has to block our attended healer with theirs. They take seven, go to two. But they have to have a blocker and an answer, or two blockers. Sweet. We got there. I didn't see any artifact creatures. If I did, I think I'd bring in Disenchant here. I'm just gonna run it back. Hmm. No green mana. I'm gonna mulligan. Okay. I think this is keepable. One land gets us to Farsight Adept. And if we, even if we don't draw land, we have two cell swords. Okay, opponent starts planes. Play planes, pass the turn. The play's a mountain. Teeter Peak Ambusher. Draw forest, which is good. Play cell sword. Pass the turn. Okay, no attacks for the opponent. We untap and draw. Play a forest, go to combat. Attack for three. Opponent is going to block. Okay. So play Farsight Adept. Pass the turn. Opponent plays a mountain into an attended healer. We untap. Play a forest. Alright. Um go to combat. Attack for three. Add our opponent down to 17. Play Attended Healer. Just to get maximum value out of Squad Commander next turn. Okay. Five mana. Opponent Synchronized Spellcraft to kill Attended Healer. Hits us for two. Okay, well we didn't draw another Cleric, so we're going to go ahead and play Squad Commander. Make some tokens. Get in for three. Squad Commander seems like really good value in limited. Like my opponent used instant speed removal to like mitigate the impact of it. Alright, we draw a Dauntless Survivor. Play a Forest. Play Dauntless Survivor. Put a 1-1 counter on Squad Commander. Go to combat. Attack for seven. Opponent doesn't block because they want to get the lifelink value to make cats. Play the Cell Sword. But if they're spending their mana to give lifelink, they don't really have like any big plays they can follow up with. Yeah, we are going to trade. So opponent will get two cats out of this deal, um, regardless of how many creatures they give lifelink. Okay. Then they play Nahiri's Binding. Okay, not a bad follow-up. 
We draw a strength of solidarity. So make Dauntless Survivor bigger. Go to combat. Attack for eight. Bona can trade the cats for the one ones and take six if they want. It's probably their best play. They chump a three three, they kill a token. They take four, go to five. Okay. They're gonna have some pretty good cards. Or like a big fat creature. Yeah, another synchronized spellcraft. Draw Maul of the Skyclaves, which I'm pretty sure just kills my opponent. This card's so good. Just throw that on Dauntless Survivor and kill our opponent. Nice! Well, we went 2-1. That was a pretty sweet deck, but... Oh, Supreme Draft Innistrad! That's what I should be playing! Holy crap! Yeah, that'll be next. Forget everything I said at the beginning of the video. We're playing Supreme Draft Innistrad. Holy crap. I'll see you guys in that video. Uh, yeah, no, uh, so leave a like, uh, drop a comment, subscribe to the channel if you're so inclined, uh, and remember, you can always follow me on Twitch, same username over there as you find me on here. I stream Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Mountain Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which would have been yesterday when this video goes up, but, um, uh, VODs for the streams go up Friday at 1 p.m., unedited, on YouTube, so I hope to see you guys there. You're all wonderful human beings. Thank you for the support, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!